Hello everybody and welcome back to the Galactic Armory. Today we're going to be taking a look at a very special clone, a clone that has a bit more lore behind it than you might think, and that is Sergeant or Commander Oppo. And he makes appearances both in the Clone Wars animated TV show, which is the helmet that we're going to be covering today, as well as the live action movies. So we're going to go over the techniques used to make this helmet, and also a bit of the lore behind this character. So let's get right into it. Now to start, we're going to 3D print this helmet. And the files that we're going to use come from my own website, galacticarmory.net. There you can find the files or the raw prints for this helmet if you don't have a 3D printer yourself. Links to both the files and the prints will be in the description. I printed at 0.3 millimeter layer height and about 5% infill. Now I split this helmet up into three pieces for printing. So the first thing we're going to have to do when it's all finished is put the pieces together. For assembly, all we're going to need is the printed parts, some super glue, I used some E6000, and a piece of sandpaper attached to a flat surface. I also used a soldering iron here, but not necessary if you don't want to. So the first thing we want to do is sand down the edges of all the parts. This is just to help it fit together a little bit smoother. 3D printing is not an exactly precise process, so you will have a little bit of a gap between the pieces if you don't sand it like this. The sanding of the edges is also going to help our cyanoacrylate super glue bond a lot faster, which will help hold the helmet in place. We don't want to be waiting there for like two minutes trying to hold this helmet together perfectly. So the faster that glue can set in the right place, the better. Now once we have all the edges sanded, we'll just apply a few drops of our super glue along the edge and then hold the pieces together. Now you need to be really careful to align these pieces as precisely as possible. Otherwise it's gonna make finishing the helmet a lot harder than it needs to be. So if the helmet is not perfectly aligned, don't feel bad of like pulling it apart, not letting the glue set, sand it a little more, apply more glue and then try again. This is where I like to use the soldering iron. Since it's a hot metal end, you can actually kind of physically weld the pieces together. I like to do that on the inside of the helmet as well as some less than noticeable parts on the outside. That's gonna hold the helmet together a lot faster. That way I can work on other parts of the helmet, like attaching the dome, and I don't have to hold it together too long. Once the helmet has a general hold and the glue is uh, starting to set, I like to apply some E6000, just some fat globs, to the inside seams of the helmet. This stuff takes about 24 hours to cure, so a bit longer than the super glue but it's gonna be a very strong hold. It's gonna make sure that our helmet doesn't fall apart on us. Now that that's finished, we get to start the glorious process of sanding. Now, since 3D printing prints helmets layer by layer, you're gonna be able to see those layers if you look very closely, and it's gonna give your helmet kind of a ridged texture. We wanna fill in those ridges to give the helmet a nice and smooth look, make it look very realistic. And the first product we're gonna use for that is called Bondo. I like to use the pre-mixed Bondo glazing and spot putty, and I find that in the automotive sections of most large grocery stores. It's everybody's favorite red toothpaste, and we're gonna apply this stuff all over the helmet. I'm talking like cover the entire thing with it to really fill in those layer lines pretty quickly and pretty easily. Now this stuff comes out as a cream, but after a few hours of reacting with the air, it will harden, and then we'll be able to sand it smooth. As you can see, I'm outside doing this. I've got gloves on and I've got a respirator on because the stuff is kind of stinky, you don't wanna do it inside if you can avoid it. Once the helmet is totally covered, we'll let it sit for at least six hours before we start sanding. Now I'll usually like to go over the helmet with a hand sander of some sort, either like a mouse or a palm sander with 120 to like 150 grit sandpaper on it, just to get the high spots and the dome cleaned off a little bit. It's gonna save your shoulder a little bit of effort and time, but then I like to follow it up and just hand sand the rest of the helmet with 150 grit sandpaper to really get in the rest of the detail areas that the hand sander couldn't reach. As you can see, I'm doing this outside with the respirator again because Bondo dust is gonna get everywhere. You can see my legs are gonna get slowly pinker and pinker, and that's all dust, and you don't wanna be breathing that stuff in. Sanding is kind of a long process, so this is where we're gonna take our break to talk a little bit about the lore. So despite not having a lot of appearances in the show or the movie, there is a lot of fun trivia behind this character. His first appearance in the show is on the Darkness on Umbara episode, which is by far one of my favorite story arcs of the whole show. It's really dark, both like literally dark and emotionally. He's briefly identified as Sergeant Oppo in the following episode named The General, and then he makes another appearance in both Plan of Descent and Carnage of Krill. In Plan of Descent, he is sent to arrest Jesse and Fives, and in the Carnage of Krell, he helps take down Krell himself. So like I said, not a lot of appearances in the show. He barely talks at all, but let's get into some of the trivia behind this character. So the name itself, Oppo, is actually a tie back to another show that Dave Filoni 
and the voice actor of the clones themselves, D. Bradley Baker, both worked on. This is a show that I actually really loved as a kid and continue to love, Avatar The Last Airbender. So Dave Filoni, the director behind a lot of the episodes of The Clone Wars, actually worked on that show, The Last Airbender, and the voice actor behind the voice of the clones, D. Bradley Baker, voiced Appa, the main character's animal companion. Now, the name similarities are enough to know that this is a callback, but the arrow on the forehead directly mirrors the one on Appa in the Avatar series. Now that's a lot of fun trivia, but that is only the trivia for the animated show. He also makes an appearance in the Revenge of the Sith movie. Now the only difference is that he doesn't have his arrow marking and he's been promoted to commander, but it is still the same Oppo from before. Now his appearance in the Revenge of the Sith movie is when Bail Organa goes to check in on the Jedi Temple to see what's been going on, and Oppo is actually the clone that goes to intercept him and turn him away. I'm sure you all know that a few seconds later, a Jedi apprentice appears and kills a lot of the clones on the deck, including Oppo himself. And while this trivia isn't directly applied to Oppo, that Jedi Padawan is actually George Lucas's son, of all things. So there's just so much trivia and fun lore behind this character for having such a minor appearance in effect on the show and story. He's probably one of the most trivia-heavy characters per second of screen time but that's all i got for lore guys i hope you enjoyed this little segment let me know if you want me to keep doing it in the future so let's get back to building this helmet so bondo is great at filling in a lot of the larger layer lines but for some of the smaller stuff we're going to be using a product called two-in-one filler and sandable this stuff is a really thick aerosol so it's going to be great at getting in the hard to reach areas as well as filling in a lot of the scratches on the bondo itself now we're going to repeat that process of the Bondo and the filler primer until the helmet is completely smooth to our liking. Once we've got that, we can move on to painting. And the first thing we're going to need to do is lay down a base coat of white. You want to apply some really light coats. You don't want to overdo it so you get like paint streaks and runs. Those are totally ugly. Don't want any of those. So take it nice and slow. Now that we've got our white base coat, we can start to lay down the tape for the 501st blue. Now I like to use some thinner masking tape as well as some thicker tape for coverage to make sure that no stray paint particles get anywhere and I just kind of freehand the tape just eyeballing it as close as I can but trying my best to make sure that both sides are symmetrical so that it looks really nice when the paint is painted over it. Once you've got all your taping done we're ready to start painting the blue. Now the blue we're going to use for this is called Rust-Oleum Gloss Brilliant Blue and when painting this stuff you really don't need a lot. I only usually do one coat of the stuff just filling it in wherever I need to. Now comes the fun part, we remove the tape, revealing the design underneath. If things all went well, you don't have any paint streaks or anything that got underneath the tape, your lines are crisp and clean, and the design is to your liking. We're going to repeat this process for the black details around the helmet as well, but for that I just used a generic black. So here you can see I glued the aerators into their slots with some E6000, but I used some tape to hold those in place since the E6000 takes so long to cure, we didn't want those pieces to fall out on us. So that tape is just there to hold them in place. Now the helmet is looking a bit too white, so we're gonna weather it a little bit. Now for weathering, I'm gonna be using an airbrush with some black paint, but if you don't have an airbrush, a black wash works just as well. I'm gonna be applying some black paint into all the hard creases of the helmet since those are the areas that are most likely to get dirty. And for this part, less is definitely more. You don't wanna overdo it too much, unless that's the look you're going for. But I usually try and exercise some restraint at this part. This weathering is gonna give the helmet a really realistic look, Make it look like it's actually been on Umbara, and it's going to bring out the blue a lot better. Now the last part we're going to put into this helmet is the visor. And for that, we're going to be using a Hobart face shield. We're going to trace out the shape of the visor that we need in a piece of paper, and then cut that shape out of the visor itself. Be sure and cut it a little bit larger than you need so you have some room to work with it, and so we have enough room for our steel stick epoxy putty. This epoxy putty is going to be what's actually holding the visor in place. It's like a two-part putty, you rub it together, Eventually it'll turn a solid color and then after a few minutes it's going to harden and it's going to do a great job at holding that visor in place. I'll usually pinch off about four or so globs of the epoxy putty and put it in the four corners of the visor. You might have to hold the visor in place for a few minutes while the epoxy putty hardens, but that's not too bad. That's kind of unavoidable. Now with all that done, that should be all you need for this helmet. Let's take a look at the finished product. So there you go guys, that is how you make your own Sergeant Oppo helmet from the Clone Wars TV show. Overall, I really like this helmet. I wish I would have gotten the arrow a little bit straighter, but I still really like it. This is a very interesting character for being such a minor one, 
I hope you guys enjoyed the little lore segment about this. This was a fun character to make that about, so let me know if you want me to do it in the future. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, I hope to see you again in the next one. <laughs>